high note, welcome a familiar face to Jerry Yegley Field and David Gifford in the VCU Rams, where VCU will look to upset a number four ranked Indiana team that is down one of their top offensive players. It get rainy, but no matter what, you got two good teams on the pitch. And now for the Hoosier team. Just about underway here at Jerry Yegley Field this works out. Maybe he's able to put a head on the ball, able to elevate up similar to his brother Bismack, but a interesting storyline there with the two Biombo brothers is Indiana looking to strike for the first time. Ball up, and it's going to be knocked out of play. It'll be Gutyard taking this one, plays it in. Header on the ball, but nothing going. It was Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week with two goals and an assist as a defender. Don't see that very often. No. I asked him if it's weird that a defender won Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. And he was like, yeah, no, it's weird. I don't get it. But, hey. He'll he, take the accolade. He, he loves to play in the attack. I don't know if Coach Yegley loves it as much, but he is a star. Here comes Gutman again. Plays it into the box. And eventually parried away. But Indiana will play one in. Head on the ball, but plays it into the box. The head put on it, but a great save. Made by Sakara, And that's a huge play. You see this ball falling to Jack Mayer's head towards the far post, and he is... Fantastic play there, but another corner kick for Indiana. They'll look to put a head on this one, and it's out of play. Again, a similar opportunity towards the middle of the box, trying to find Corey Thomas. It shows that Indiana can change it up off the... Another corner. War of attrition. This one played out. Now back into the box. A couple of different yellow and white jerseys swarming on the ball, and now VCU looks to possess and go the other way. The counterattack on for the Rams. Now making a move and promptly throwing that ball away. It's early in this one. They really are, and it's, it's those crosses coming out wide. Another ball played into the box, attempting to try and rattle this Virginia Commonwealth defense, and the defense is one of the more experienced parts of this Rams team last season, but this isn't really a Virginia Commonwealth team with too much experience. As Indiana plays it in and it's headed out, another corner. Very talented. Here comes Gutyar again playing it in. This one with a little less height. In How many other bigger bodies in the far post area? Indiana not letting off the gas, tries to play another one into the box, but it's deflected out. And, of course, you have Andrew Gutman and his impressive athleticism in there as well. Switch fields. That was fancy for Mel. Timmy Mel playing a little bit of offense. He does that from time and time again. As Gutman will play a ball in. On the near flank now is Buckmaster. Buckmaster the flip to Gutyar. He's knocked down. A little contact, but no call. VCU able to possess, looking for a counter, but they lose the ball again. The Indiana back line is playing very far up, and you have to figure that's one of the reasons the offense has really dominated the time of possession with the ball today. And a part of that must be so frustrating for VCU. It seems like every time they're about to go on the counterattack, there's Timmy Mel, that's, there's Jack Mayer, and especially there's Frankie Moore in the midfield just killing every counter they've had so far. And that might change as this game opens up. More another one of those unsung heroes in the midfield is Timmy Mill. And if you're VCU, you still have to harp on the fact that Indiana, although they've had possession and they've had good opportunities, they have not broken through. And that's what VCU's defense has been able to do all year so far. They have three clean sheets on the season, and that you mentioned how they're the experienced part of this squad. And you can attribute part of that to Sikera as well. Already making one great save, and he might have his hands full again as the ball played inside the six, but no Hoosier home to reach that ball. Left side more than usual as Gutman breaks free. He looks to get something going, and now a ball played into the box, but Sikera there to get it. The chest trap didn't quite land for Indiana. It looked like Rennix that was trying to make a play happen, but nothing there. Just could not... Get that on the first touch off his chest. A little bit too much oomph coming from these various opportunities. And then second half, we go, we go have a good conversation and adjust. Indiana, their best opportunity so far. Bowen played into the box. It's Sikara again, but right to the foot of Spencer Glass. 
Glass again, puts up a shot. Sakara can't get it, and the Hoosier score. We talked about the opportunities. It's Gutyar who puts it in. You give Indiana this many chances, they're going to put one in the back of the net. Take a look here on the replay. Spencer Glass sending this one in. It either comes off Rennix or the defender there, but honestly, that's a continuation of the style of play that Indiana has had so far this match. Just throw things towards goal, hope for the best, and there is the best for Indiana. Indiana intercepting that pass. They'll play it off. Here comes Renix. One defender to beat. He's got the speed. Renix, a shot. He gets it by Sakara. Absolutely electric and the backflip to boot. Holy moly, what an effort from Justin Renix. We've been waiting for that here in Bloomington. Uses his pace to get all the way down that flank untouched. He uses his dribbling ability to flick that by a defender, and then the shot finessed right into the corner for his first of the season. And man, oh man, I'm overwhelmed up here in the booth. Talent that people have, uh, have been talking about. And Rennix has plenty of that talent as the Indiana will look for another. They're not just going to be satisfied with two. Already in the first 25 minutes of play, Indiana a 2-0 lead. And here's Gutman looking to build off already a great campaign from last week, and Gutman does it again. Andrew Gutman, a third goal this season, and the floodgates are open. An absolutely masterful effort, and just like that, Andrew Gutman once again showing you that left-backs can score goals, people. That's a thing now. Andrew Gutman can do it, and I called it I knew at some point this season he was going to do the Ronaldo goal celebration. You got a little C action right there on the Big Ten logo. Andrew Gutman was Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week last week. Hasn't missed a beat. Another goal. Had the assist to Griffin Dorsey with those two goals last week. There being an issue. And really the rain has held off, which everyone here has been fortunate, especially the fans not having to deal with any bit of a downpour. But he said it can affect play a little bit, but... He generally said it's not going to hurt them too much. But just like that, Indiana, a 3-0 lead. There's still 20 minutes left in this first half. A chance to deliver a dagger to this VCU team if they get another one in there. But the Rams will look to try and get one of their own. This VCU team will not be backing down from anything. As now Indiana plays another one into the box. This one carried away, though, over towards Thomas. Hoosiers again. Inside the box. Play the ball in. Sikara will not have to make a save on this one. A little bit far. VCU and goals against Temple and Santa Clara. Five shots against Santa Clara as well, including the game-winning goal in overtime against the Broncos of Santa Clara. Was preseason all A-10 all-first team. Also was second on the team in assists last year with eight. So Haji will look to get things going for the Rams attack. But again, Indiana, a chance for a fourth. A little too much pace on this ball, though, collected by the Rams. A little bit momentum and, and connect those passes, especially here on this left wing. So far, just one foul between both teams. It was on Indiana in the opening minutes of this match, but Virginia Commonwealth starting to get a couple of passes consecutively, building some momentum, looking for that first goal of the day as Indiana will look to strike for the fourth time. Ball bouncing around the midfield. Being knocked around a little bit. Now we might have a little bit of physical play, but Indiana wins the 50-50 ball. Played out wide. Secure at the near post, expecting another shot. Instead, ball knocked down. Another corner kick for Indiana. Sixth of the day for the Hoosiers. 
Corner kick on the way. Ball bounces out of volley. And it's deflected by VCU. Sakira would have had his hands full on that play. It was coming in with some pace. But and this becomes a great question of, did Frankie Moore mean to do this? He just last second puts his foot on that one and drives it down to the far side of the box. But 14 minutes left in the first half. Swartz plays it in. And Sakira can't get it again. And the Hoosiers strike again. Indiana. Dominating the first half, now leading 4-0. The VCU Rams will look for their first goal, but it's all been Hoosiers so far. And this time, we're talking about that depth. It's those substitutions. A.J. Palazzolo hadn't touched the ball yet after subbing in, and Trevor Swartz getting realistically what is what is, is his first touch of the game, and he sends that right to Palazzolo's head on that near post. I, I think there's no need for concern anymore in any way. Palazzolo looking for a second one. Instead, we'll play it out to Buckmaster. Buckmaster for Pancho. Tries to get, to get through two defenders. Buckmaster in there with Pancho. A little bit of tug of war with the ball as now Indiana will, pit, will pitch it back to their back line. Marrower for Gutman. Gutman already with a goal. Looking to attack. A four-goal lead. You have to figure Coach Yagley will be a little more forgiving if Gutman tries to play a little more offensive. Gutman again plays it off. The Hoosiers looking for goal number five. Not satisfied. Gutman looking for glass instead. Now Gutman plays it off. Gutyar over to glass. Glass plays it in. And now VCU will look for a counter, but can't possess the ball. It'll be Mayer who plays it back. Hoosiers moving rapidly. Flicks it off. It's Gutman. Plays it into the box. Up and a header. VCU tries to clear. And that one might have been off the Hoosiers and was. They had that shutout speed last year. Here's Glass in the box. Tries to, with some fancy footwork, to get past the defender, but instead the ball cleared towards the Hoosiers' back line. Just about 10 minutes left in this first half. Indiana has struck four times all teams. It'll be Luke Murphy for VCU coming into the game. Offensive players for Coach Gifford. Ball played in by Gutman. Head put on it. Palazzolo will... What program you're playing at? I mean, that's an astounding total. I, I couldn't do that on the peewee field. <laughs> 35 goals for Luke Murphy, native of Glasgow, Scotland. And that's another hallmark of this VCU team. They have a lot of players from outside the United States, 10, nearly a third of their team from outside the U.S. Glass will play it into the box. Indiana looking for another and getting it. What more can you say about the Indiana offense today? The fifth goal in the first half. They lead 5-0, a beautiful cross by Glass. Another strong cr cross by Glass with so much pace that no one really can get in front of it other than Reese Buckmaster, who just hit him with the Rico. Reese Buckmaster picking up his first goal of the year. And The five goals has already matched the most in a single season by Indiana. Going back to last year, they had five goals, ironically, against Santa Clara, who the VCU Rams just played. But Indiana It's worth noting Reese Buckmaster getting that goal because Andrew Gutman mentioned how he's the best right back in the country, but doesn't get a lot of offensive opportunities. Here's the first save for Trey Muse. He parries it away. Strong shot there by Moons. And that play was set up by Murphy coming in and already making an impact. So the first corner kick of the day for the Rams, it'll be taken 
by Robinson. And you notice the frustration from Trey Muse that that shot even got to him on net. This team's still looking for the shutout. That's what they harp all year. So O'Quinn Robinson, Bull Bay, Jamaica native, will take the corner. VCU looking for their first goal of the day with just about seven minutes left in this first half. Ball played in and a head put on it by Indiana. VCU will look for a little something more, but the Hoosiers able to come up with it. They'll play the ball wide. Virginia Commonwealth will have a chance to possess once more. It seems almost like Indiana just woke up on the right side of the bed, to be honest, uh, with the talent behind some of these goals. So VCU needs to look at this as, as there's still 45 minutes in this one in the second half and five more to go here in the first as what lessons can we learn moving forward if we want to get back to the tournament? VCU, also a second-half team. They made the NCAA tournament last year. Got a double bye before losing to Butler 3-2. to There's a little too much talent they learning, and now is an opportunity to learn. Indiana again on the restart. Slowly and bringing it back out are the Hoosiers. Had a man look like he could have had Poncho on the near flank, but instead decided to pass it out, give it back to the back line. Here comes Glass on the far flank. We'll play a ball in, bouncing around a little bit, but the Rams able to clear it. I don't know if he intended to meg the defender in front of him on that cross, but he did. It looked good. It looked fancy. It's a little pizzazz for Indiana, up 5 nothing already in the first half. You know I like pizzazz. Everyone could use a little pizzazz with the soccer. Makes it even more exciting than it already is. We'll lay it off for Glass. Glass could be looking at another cross. Instead, possesses for a moment. Puts the ball on his right foot and dumps it off. Oh, a pretty play back to Gutman. Thinks about the strike. Instead, plays it off, and it's called off by Sikera. Able to call off his defenders. And then you want some pizzazz. They do not appear to be complacent, though. Still looking for more while still trying to limit the VCU offense the best they can. Preserve the clean sheet for Trey Muse in that back line. Here's Glass. He's been active, especially in these last 15, 20 minutes. We'll dump the ball off, but a miscommunication will give the ball back to the Rams. Such an impressive five goals in the first half. How do you keep up this momentum? Well, I thought it all started with our defensive pressure and our shape. Um, we said often that's where everything starts, and um, we got some guys that can make special plays, and we knew we could get around the edge on him. We knew our service could be dangerous. And it was great to see Justin on the board. I thought his um, that was just a special play for him to create that goal. And it's nice to get him on board and a couple other guys. So I thought it was a pretty clinical half. Um, pretty pleased. And I know we really wanted to come out strong and on top of them. And we were rewarded for it. So it's nice to see we want to continue that this half. It wasn't about the number of opportunities. It was about how effective they were with their opportunities. And you saw goals that you haven't seen all year that have been absolutely spectacular. What Goodman did was amazing. What, what Rennix did was absolutely stellar. And it's hard to be that clinical all year long. And so you just have to appreciate it in the moment. And that second question really for Coach Yegley, they talked about managing the team. And the one caveat that Coach Yegley did get is he said, we might cycle a couple of guys in depending on the score line. But of course, most important, that shutout. But there might be an opportunity for some guys off the bench to try and make an impact as well. Well, we mentioned how Dorsey isn't here, and Dorsey might not be here later again in the season, and you have to learn who else could contribute. Indiana looking for a sixth goal of the day. A volley, but wide. It was Austin Poncho that tried to make a highlight reel play, bouncing that one off the knee and then volleying it over towards, it looks to be Joseph Rice now in the game for V. Drew Moore and Ned Grabovoy, both players that played for an extensive period of time in Major League Soccer. So it's happened before for Indiana. They know how to handle absences. Indiana looking for goal number six. Fancy footwork, the pizzazz we talked about, but intercepting that ball is Lockerbie. Gooman has been impressive offensively. Three goals his last three matches, including one assist. We hit on it earlier. He's got the hops. He's got the talent. Number two player in the nation, despite being lightly recruited out of high school, has exceeded the expectations of practically everyone in Bloomington and has made himself an indispensable member of this back line in entirety of the Indiana team. And you know who else who he has surpassed their expectations? 
Who's that? Probably Chicago Fire. <laughs> He's a member of the Chicago Fire. Gets the ball taken away from him there. And we talked about Haji being one of those impact players for Virginia Commonwealth. He was listed as the 810 Offensive Player of the Week last week, a high honor for one of the premier offensive players for this Rams team and really in the A-10, but Indiana's done a good job neutralizing a lot of that talent and ability he possesses. Honestly, with him being realistically the main man on this VCU team, unlike he was in the previous season where he was more of a facilitator for the rest of the, the Rams talent, Indiana was able to focus in on one guy. Indiana looking for goal number six. They'll play the ball into the box, but it's deflected out by the Rams. A corner kick for Indiana. They continue to dominate the set-piece game today. Spencer Glass will take this corner. That was a nice opportunity again. Corey Thomas getting some space, but great close out by the VCU defense. Glass from the corner. Plays it in. A high arcing ball looking for the header. This one will roll. I, I make sure of it. So Simon Fitch, good effort. Indiana not done yet, though. Trying to string together a couple passes. Buckmaster had a chance, but we'll let that one go by. So Travis Cook, the junior midfielder, getting some action for Coach Gifford and the Rams. Ball bouncing around a little bit. And a late foul call on Indiana. See here coming in with the tackle, and it, it's it's grappling back and forth. You could call that either way. And Glass having to retreat. And he's able to get that ball out of there. A key moment there and a little more fancy footwork and a takedown by VCU. That's going to be the third foul on the Rams today. And that's just frustration. You see Justin Rennix practically posting up his man flicking the ball behind him and once you see that as a VCU defender you just get agitated and take him down. We've had a couple b uh, basketball references today. We got the post up there and of course Bismack Biombo. Had a couple. Well, people are very adamant that Indiana is a basketball school but it's very easy to see that the Hoosiers are a soccer school. A lot of great varsity sports here. Didn't find anyone. But another opportunity VCU has been knocking on the door a little bit more in this second half offensively. Ball played over for Klein, almost lost it. And if you're VCU, you might want to make work more on the flanks. because And you see here a big turnover. And Biamo turns it right back over toward the Hoosiers' back line. An opportunity there, but as you mentioned, more of a target man. He almost had an opportunity there, but you find him perhaps with one more pass on that. That might be his bread and butter, so to speak was something really during this game. Yeah, it was some breaking moves uh, in the first half of this matchup that Jerry Igley got in the Presidential Medal for Excellence from President McRobbie earlier today. And that's quite the honor to have bestowed upon you. Obviously, having the field named after you is quite the honor as well, but that's another one of the many accolades for Jerry Yegley and the Yegley family. So congratulations to Jerry Yegley. And it's the, the highest honor that President McRobbie can, can give out. It's, it's almost so exemplary of, of how Jerry Yeagley has been such a talented man and done so much for this program and so much for Indiana as a university. Joe Schmidt possessing the ball. We'll dump it off now to Spencer Glass. Glass plays across, but miscommunication there. That can be part of the, the time and effort that Jerry Yegley poured into this program really to raise them to the national champion and national powerhouse that Indiana has become. It really is fitting that he was awarded this, this medal. And with Todd Yegley here, Jerry Yegley's not done with this program. Oh, no. um, if you attend media availability every week and check out Hoosiers at practice, Jerry's there quite often. And he's in the press box very often. And he has an eye on this team. And it's almost like an extra voice that you can't get anywhere else. And when I say extra voice, it's Jerry Yeagley. It's a legend. It's, it's a legendary it's, voice. It's not just someone chiming in with, hey, you should probably do this. It's, it's someone who knows soccer better than almost everyone else in the nation that can provide you advice. VCU trying to make an attack with the Indiana defense, swarming right to him and able to intercept the ball. It's the this season, two to one. 
The Cardinal winning their third consecutive championship. Stanford, though, ranked number 25 right now after a couple of draws to open up their season. Draws to San Jose State and Maryland. Gutyar at the midfield. We'll dump it back off the back line. We'll possess. And it's starting to get to that point in the game where maybe Todd Yagley's thinking of making a substitution that he might not make in a, a game perhaps where it's a, a little closer on the scoreboard right now, 5 nothing Indiana, but it could be a chance where some guys get some playing time. For Indiana, Caulfield has played just 22 minutes this season, was academic all Big Ten the last two years. Entered the game for PKs against Michigan State, as we said earlier, played against UNC, the East Lake Florida native. Stands at six foot two and is some, getting some action here for the last 20 minutes of the second half. Ball flying around a little bit. Spencer Glass, it's been an impressive day for Indiana. It certainly has, and we've been talking about it throughout the broadcast. It's it's what Todd Yegley said at halftime. The five goals were clinical. They were fancy almost, and we've seen a lot of pizzazz, as, as you've been talking about a lot throughout this broadcast. But the way Justin Rennix was able to find space on the wing, I I haven't seen that all season long from Indiana, and it was, it was truly remarkable. And Andrew Goodman doing what he always does at this point. Is it just going to be common that he scores every game, I guess? I don't know. Could be. But he's showing you once again that left back score, which is not really commonplace in the rest of college soccer. And even Palazzolo, his header proving a, a massive point that he can provide size and agility in the box on corner kicks, which is huge for a team that advocates so often the importance of those restarts. 